Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Now I was really interested in looking at the Franz Kafka inspired the Metamorphosis but unfortunately we just ran out of time and the game was released and I thought now nah, that's the last I'll ever hear of it. In what is quite a nice little twist, All In Games, the guys who are pushing this one, approached me a couple of days ago and said, look, I know it's last minute, but we really want you guys to talk about the title. And I said, well, that's okay, but obviously can't do a review because you can't do a sponsored review. That would not be cool. And they were like, that's fine. Just talk to your audience about the game, what you think of it, and let them know what it's all about. So I said, okay, I'll do exactly that. So what is the Metamorphosis all about? What's it got in it? And also who made it and why? Let's find out. I mentioned right there at the start that the game is heavily inspired by the work of Franz Kafka, and particularly his novel Die Verwandlung, which essentially means metamorphosis or the metamorphosis, and how we like to write about surrealist and strange situations, often dealing with the psychological. There's a bit of that strange feeling that he goes for in the political sense in something like the Dishonored series, and the strange socio-political framework that lots of those titles are based around. But Die Verwandlung, or the Metamorphosis as we've got here with this title, delves deeply into every aspect of his creation and the fact that you actually get to play it out. Many of the different characters that you'll meet throughout the title are inspired by the different characters from his novels. And there are lots of small nods and touches that fans of the literature are going to absolutely love. Now you might be thinking, hang on, I wanted to hear about a game. And uh, yeah, let's get on with it. If you're sat there thinking, I don't know anything about that and I don't really care, then you're in luck. Because the Metamorphosis, while it does have a few flaws, and I'll talk about those as well, is incredibly ambitious and accomplished in some ways game. You start out your story as a character called Gregor, who's a guest in the house of one of his friends. What a night. And when he wakes up in his bed, some strange things happen and he just begins to shrink. You move from one room to the other, just finding a key, and in each room you realise that you're getting smaller. When you eventually realise that you have become a bug, that's when the strangeness really cranks up to nine. It's a bit like a dark and macabre Alice in Wonderland, and, and the voice of your character begins to shift into bug speech, which is it's quite horrible to listen to, but it had that District 9 speech style to it. <laughs> You'll find out early on in the game about the tower, and this is where you want to get to because supposedly if you reach it, there's a chance that you can regain your human form. So throughout the whole experience, you've got that overarching drive. There's a real Honey I Shrunk the Kids vibe here, in that the most small and mundane task like reaching a desk to look at a letter becomes an arduous parkour inspired platforming adventure. There's a nice touch where you can crawl into sticky substances and then use this to climb up vertical surfaces, but this will only last for a certain amount of time. And at any point in the title, you can hold a button down and it will zoom the camera out and show you exactly what your objectives are. While in the earlier stages, it's quite simplistic. It will be make your way from A to B. Later in the game, there are many puzzles introduced and some of them quite clever, but equally bizarre like falling into the desk of a lawyer and then having to fix his photocopying machine in the most unusual way. There are physics based puzzles as well which is always nice to see and the inclusion of being able to see your character's front legs is actually quite beneficial to judging your jumps and things like that. If you die you'll respawn almost instantly from a point quite close to where you perished and I do like how your little legs point up in the air when you die exactly like a dying cockroach. <laughs> Now, despite this being a sponsored coverage and not a review, I did still want to go over some of the issues with the title and I did ask All In Games if this was okay and they said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Now, I think the reason they said that was fine is because there's a huge patch just about to come out for the game. And as it stands right now, later in the title, there's quite a lot of slowdown and lag in some areas. I found that the vast majority in the earlier areas is fine in terms of the performance. There are a few visual glitches like a bit of popping and stuff that could be fixed. It didn't detract from how much I felt I got out of the game so far, but I am really glad that they were happy for me to say, look, it's not perfect as it stands right now, but there's a big patch on the way. I think that's important for you all to know. And the frame rates, as you can see, are generally solid. It's just that overall visual quality that needs a touch of work, and thankfully, it's getting it. The scale aspect of the game, though, is very clever indeed. The way that they've warped the faces and the world around you, it's almost like they've increased the field of view for anything that's above your eye line. 
and it gives the impression that you really are a tiny little creature. I'm a big fan of the surreal, as you all know, and the strange, and as you go about your puzzle solving, usually there'll be a couple of the main characters of the story in the background having a bit of a discussion or circular argument that adds an overall flavour to the game. Guys, contacts with higher officials. Another aspect worth mentioning is the audio. It's got a beautiful soundtrack, lots of classical music, and some very clever moments, like where the soundtrack is linked to the puzzle that you're solving, and you manage to slow or break that, and then the impact it has on that level. Finally, I just want to go through a little bit about the developer, as I think they kind of deserve it. They're called Ovid Works. They are, as you would imagine, an indie studio based in Warsaw in Poland, who only began in 2015, so they haven't been around for very long. They're a group of friends who had this vision of creating the title, but wanted to bring that traditional storytelling aspect to it. They're now a team of 17, which is a pretty decent size for an indie studio, and their focus is all about telling those tales. So it's nice, nice that, I like it. I'm gonna put all the prices on the screen so you've got an idea of the overall cost of the game but if you're at all intrigued by this one and you like the premise then do go check out the links etc in the description check out some reviews there are some really good ones from friends like switch corner but it's a title that i'll play to completion myself because i think strange might well be my middle name once again a big thanks to all in games who sponsored this video and to everyone who watches our videos, we really do appreciate all the comments down below. And in fact, that's probably where we get the biggest enjoyment out of the channel. It's just down in those comments chatting to a lot of you. For all things Switch, all the time, thanks to our patrons. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! organization that have squeezed yourselves in here in order to listen in and snoop on me. Well, I'm afraid you've come here for nothing.